Again, I'm Nicholas from Doc City. Welcome, everyone, and enjoy the presentation. Over to you, Jared. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the presentation. Uh, my, as I uh, said, my name is Jared, and uh, I'm here to pretty much talk to you about BI Norwegian Business School and the opportunities that exist um, for doing your master's program. So, I bet a lot of you all are wondering, who are we? BI Norwegian Business School, you probably have never heard of us. We are actually a, a leading business school, triple accredited, and we are in fact the second largest uh, business school in uh, Europe. So we're no small fish by any stretch of the imagination. A little bit more about our background, we are independent, not for, not for, for, for profit uh, organization. And we, have, we were founded in 1943, so this year is our 75th anniversary. And uh, within Norway, we actually the main provider of our research-based knowledge in business and management disciplines. In total, we have about 20,000 students uh, campus, uh, campuses uh, in Norway. So as you can see here, we have uh, Trondheim, Bergen, Stavanger, and Oslo campus. And we also have a sort of satellite post in our in Fudan University where we do a, a joint MBA program. So the focus of today is going to be the Master of Science programs and those are located primarily in Oslo, but from uh, next, uh, next year we will be offering one program as well in the Bergen campus in case you wish to experience the west, um, the west coast of Norway. So our school is, um, is a research-based school. Uh, we have eight uh, research departments. Uh, accounting and Auditing and Business Analytics, the Department of Communication and Culture, Department of Economics, Finance, Law and Governance, Leadership and Organizational Behavior, Department of Marketing, and Department of Strategy. So these here are sort of the areas by which our programs fall under. As, as I mentioned before, we are a business school. So now in terms of the accreditations, I did mention that we are triple accredited, one of um, only 70 business schools around the world to have the triple crown, as you can see there. And that, I think, is just a testament or a commitment to providing high quality education for all our students. So a bit about our rankings, uh, the BI Fudan MBA ranked 39th on Financial Times, the Executive MBA 93rd, the MSc in Finance, uh, this year is the first year it's been ranked, so number 48, and the Master in Management, which is essentially our Master of Science in Business program, number 87. Uh, stuff we are we're really proud of and we are trying to actively improve every day. The Economist rankings, we will top in the Nordics, uh, so in this part of the world, Scandinavia, uh, we're very proud of that, and we are number 17 actually on the uh, top 40 in the Masters in Management programs. So now I know you're thinking, you know, Norway is a bit, is a bit far. Uh, I just want you to know that you won't be the only international students here. Um, something that we have noticed more and more is that um, students are choosing to come towards uh, Scandinavia and in particular Norway for their, their studies. And one of the cool things about um, what we've seen particularly here in Oslo is that there is a commitment at, um, you know, at local government levels towards uh, interna internationalization of the city, towards making Oslo a student city. So if I could tell you right now that um, last day I, was, I had the privilege of being in a you know, sort of open forum whereby international students throughout Oslo was where they were invited uh, to be able to give their, to sort of give their voice, ideas, etc., to how you can make uh, Oslo a better student um, city, a more friendly student city. And I think that sort of commitment from the top is really encouraging in terms of choosing a destination uh, to pursue your master's degree program. So a little bit about the international environment here at BI. We have 1,800 um, international students. All the international students are currently housed in the Oslo campus, which is the main campus, as you might imagine. And that holds 12,000 students. So 18, 1,800 out of 12,000 12, is not a bad ratio at all. In terms of opportunities, we have over 200 partner schools. So both at, at the bachelor as well as the master's level, there is sufficient opportunity to go abroad, see, uh, see other places, see experience other, uh, other schools, uh, institutions, courses that we, we don't currently provide and I think that is really great uh, we maintain and we're very proud of all those partnerships at the master's level which is the level re relevant to you guys 20% of the master of science students are international so you know one in five that's not a bad ratio at all the BBA level 60% and then we have 30% of our faculty are international 
However, it is worth saying that the majority of the faculty, um, a very high percentage, have all taken their degrees at uh, prestigious institutions around the world. And this is something that we are very proud of. Yearly, we get around 500 exchange students um, coming, coming in. Uh, and we also send a, a large number of students out as well in terms of the sort of exchange of students between our, our respective partners. Okay, so now in terms of programs, um, essentially, what do we offer? Uh, we offer, when I say, it, when you see their international programs, uh, I want you to, to, to be aware that that means that the program is de uh, delivered completely in English. So as you can imagine, being a Norwegian school, we have Norwegian language programs at the bachelor's level, for example. But we do have two English programs uh, at the bachelor's level, as well as seven full-time master of science programs. And then we also have the PhD programs with six different specializations. So we, are a f we do offer a full package of um, uh, educational uh, options for, for our students. In terms of the profile of the master of science programs, um, it's quite straightforward, uh, similar to what you see across a lot of European schools. So it's two years full time, so it's 120 ECTS credits, that's the type of credits that uh, we use. The program is pre-experience. What do I mean by that? It means that when you apply, we are not looking or considering uh, work experience in terms of determining whether or not you can get into the program. So this is uh, really good for those of you who are now finishing up your bachelor's and want to continue straight on into your master's. It's a very natural step to take. Uh, all the um, programs are research-based, so the, the programs I will be talking to you about today, they all contain um, a, a thesis. So 30 ECTS credits. So a quarter of your, um, of your workload is going to be put into that. And having gone through the Master of Science and Finance myself here at um, VI, I, I think, um, yeah, you would definitely be challenged. And I think it's a worthwhile challenge because it better prepares you for the next stage in your career. Uh, we like to think in general that um, the programs have an international focus because we understand that um, we have to look outwards as opposed to, as opposed to inwards, but with a Scandinavian perspective, because at the end of the day, we are here in Scandinavia. And I think that is something that I have really appreciated. I myself, um, as you might have guessed, um, I am not Norwegian. I come from uh, two tiny islands in the Caribbean, uh, the Trinidad and Tobago. So I too have come a long way to do the uh, Master of Science program here. And I can tell you right now that I'm like really happy. And that's why I'm sitting here trying to convince you guys to sort of make the same choice that I made and go north. In terms of our programs, we do have uh, if affiliations. So for example, the Master of Science program, which I'll be talking about in a bit, is affiliated with the, um, the CFA exam it prepares you for the level one exams in that and as well as we have uh, the SEMA affiliation. So now let's actually get to the um, program offering. So this is just an overview and then I'll take you through within a reasonable depth of each of the, um, each of the programs. So as you can see here, we have uh, seven programs, Applied Economics, Business Analytics, uh, Master of Science in Business, Master of Science in Finance, Master of Science in Leadership and Organizational Psychology, Master of Science in Strategic Marketing Management, and the Master of Science in Quantitative Finance. Now, if you notice there, there are three programs at the top that have little asterisks next to them, and they start with QTEM, that stands for um, Quantitative Techniques of uh, Economic economics and management. And those are specially, those are special additional programs that you can do, whereby you get a QTEM master's network. So it's a bit different um, setup in that you do your first semester at BI, you do your second semester on exchange at one of the partner schools, you do your third semester on exchange at another one of the partner schools, and then you finish your last semester here with us. So it offers you a more quantitative um, uh, program experience and we offer it in the applied economics, business analytics and the business um, programs. So that is definitely something that um, I think if it interests you, you know, take a look on our website and check out um, if that is something you would be interested in for those who want a really quantitative experience whilst getting all the benefits of um, getting to study at three different uh, institutions. Okay, so now let's go through um, the programs one by one, basically. I mean, I'm not gonna deep dive into it because I think, you know, with time constraints, um, you, we don't have that uh, amount of time to do it. So 
and you can really have an entire webinar on each program if you really wanted to, to go deep into the program. But I want to give you all a general feel, and this is the most important thing. I want to stoke interest, stoke wonder, and see if this is something that could be of interest to you. Because I believe that um, you should find exactly what you're interested in because having gone through the program myself, it is very challenging and they ask a lot of long nights. But I think it's worth it if the genuine interest in the, in the subject uh, is there. So I think that matters most of all. So the Applied Economics uh, Masters it effectively provides you with a solid um, foundation in the core economic theories and tools, and, and then you'll get to apply them in real life situations. So hence the name Applied Economics, right? It's not going to just be a, a, a bit of theoretical and you sit down, sit down in class and look at um, equations on the board. You are going to actually apply what you're, what you're being taught. And you will gain this uh, analytical and quantitative skills to sort of understand the strategies that um, improve the de decision-making process. And this here will be based on statistics. So, I mean, when you read, when you read that, or hopefully you're reading that, uh, this program clearly has a very quantitative uh, focus and it, in, it integrates a lot of data science techniques um, in courses that uh, uh, the sort of simulate the economic models and you analyze data. So you will be developing a very strong analy analytical skills and learn as well, and this is very important, the framework for analysis that can be applied um, to a great variety of areas. And this is not, not limited to, but including uh, international trade, um, business cycles, financial markets, even to firm competition, market ana analysis, and uh, strategic behavior. Uh, so, I mean, definitely if you're excited in these sort of topics, um, this might be the program for you. Uh, some of the courses that you might be um, sort of exposed to uh, would be, uh, for example, the incentives, uh, we, wages and labor markets course. So this, if this course, the focus is where you understand the recent trends in the um, labor markets related to technological innovation, uh, digitalization and automation. So for example, yeah, how does this uh, digitalization of a company actually uh, affect it, right? And then you gain knowledge and skills sort of based on this to quantitatively anal analyze your labor markets, wage determination, and of course, human resource management. So it's very all encompassing, of course. Another one uh, that you might have expected and been able to guess right away would be uh, macroeconomics. And this, this one primarily, you'll learn the models um, and empirical techniques uh, by using sort of leading macro analysts. And you allow to yourself to analyze macroeconomic events by simulating these numerical models. Models. Uh, so these typical topics would be some stuff like uh, investments, uh, sustainable development, inflation, and sort of how monetary and fiscal policy uh, affect the economy and uh, business. And last but not least, this focus, uh, this program, sorry, uh, does have a data and programming component because let's face it, this is the world that we live in. You know, we the data we have is only as valuable as what we can sort of derive from it. So there is sort of basic programming courses that you will have within the course of this program. So definitely a, 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 an exciting program for those who are interested in um, economics. Next, we move on to business analytics. I know business analytics is definitely a bit of a buzz program. Um, and essentially, I mean, analytics is, is essentially a means to an end, you know, to achieve greater business value. Um, through superior insights. And so in that regard, you will sort of learn um, how learn to conduct descriptive, uh, predictive, and prescriptive analyses uh, to support and make business decisions. Because at the end of the day, you need to, to understand these things in order to operate effectively within a business context. So you will, will develop knowledge and skills um, through close collaboration with um, some international industry, uh, industry partners that we are very fortunate to have. And the program actively utilizes um, like team projects. So it's a lot of group work because that sort of simulates the environment that you would experience out um, in, in the actual workplace. Some topics that you, uh, courses that you could expect to um, encounter would be sort of stuff like decision theory, where you're sort of learning about biases and decisions, risk uncertainty and game theory, uh, data management, of course, because it's important to be able to understand how to identify, import, and learn uh, and clean and utilize this data, as well as a big component of, of um, any data analysis course would be the sort of uh, econometrics course with um, big data applications. So you're learning 
forecasting and prediction models, casual in inference and um, some machine learning. So it's definitely an exciting course. Uh, this course actually started up uh, for the first time this year. And um, it's definitely a, a, was a big hit um, in terms of we actually had to extend the, the size of the um, incoming class just to accommodate the um, demand because we have so many well-qualified students. So definitely, I think this program is a good option for those of you who may have a degree sort of outside, let's say you have an engineering or computer science degree and you want to get into sort of business, this might be the, the program for you. Next would be our most general degree, the uh, Master of Science in Business. So this is a very generalist business degree and it's also our most customizable degree. And that allows you a lot of flexibility in terms of you controlling the content in which you learn. So for example, this program allows you to specialize in um, several, sev uh, I think it's seven different parts, yeah, seven different areas. And I think this gives you a sort of solid uh, education for a wide variety of our uh, skills um, suited for those who wish to be sort of managers and leaders within an international context. Uh, you will sort of have a general, uh, strong general knowledge of economics and management. And then depending on which majors you choose, that um, you can tailor your experience. So let's just take a look quickly at um, the different majors that are available. Okay, so we see first off, you can, you can choose to major in accounting and business control, uh, economics, finance, and you notice that those two, those two programs have uh, QTEM uh, options. So you can choose to go Master of Science in Business, Economics with a QTEM. And this QTEM degree is actually a separate master's degree. So you get two degrees by the time you're finished with the program. Economics, Finance, you have the major in Leadership and Change. This Master of Science in Leadership and Change, this is the program that is also offered in the Bergen uh, campus as well, in case you want to experience the West Coast of Norway. You have a major in logistics, operations, and supply chain management, uh, which is super important as companies seek to optimize and cut costs and operate as leanly and efficiently, not just for their own bottom line, but for also with, um, with consideration towards in the environment. Uh, we have a major in marketing, and then you also have a major in strategy. And I think one of the coolest things about this program, as I was saying, in terms of customization, is that you are allowed, so you do the first year, which is pretty standard for all Master of Science and Business students. And then you have um, specialization courses that um, you do depending on which one. So you'll have some in your second semester or the second half of the first year. So your first semester is standard. Second half is where you start to have those specialization courses come in, as well as your third semester where you also are allowed to do three courses outside. So you have three electives, each of six ECTS credits that you get to do outside of your major. So I, for example, if I chose to do the Master of Science in Finance, and then I elected to do um, a sort of me, a Master of Science, sorry, in Business, and I decided to do the major in Finance, for example, I can elect to do three courses in the major in strategy, for example, or I can split it up against uh, amongst different courses. So I can do either finance, one finance course, I can do an economics course, I can do a logistics course, or I could do two marketing courses and a strategy course. It's really up to you to customize sort of the experience that you want to have. And, and each of those majors have, has its um, requisite uh, elective courses. So you can sort of really find what you're interested in. Next, we talk about the Master of Science and Finance. This is a program I actually did, so I am a bit biased, but uh, I would say all of the programs are equally as good. Um, the finance department at BI is particularly strong. It's actually amongst the top 10 in Europe in terms of um, publishing within the top um, journals of journal finance, uh, et cetera. Um, the Master of Science has a very, uh, the Master of Science program has a, in uh, finance, has a very uh, applied uh, focus. So you get to learn the theory and then you utilize it. So this is reinforced constantly with different um, uh, homework assignments, projects, group work. Uh, so it's constant work. Yes, for two years, you'll be worked to the bone. But I think that better prepares you. you know? I don't think anybody wants to come all the way to Norway, spend their hard-earned money and not be challenged, not feel as though they've learned anything. So you will be challenged um, on a daily basis. It would require a lot of effort. But I think that is what is what you're looking for at this level. You want to be able to stand out from the crowd. 
Students also through this program will be developing a lot of IT and programming skills. And this is in response to the, uh, a, a sort of very visible need in the, in the finance industry for people who not only can speak finance, but also can do programming as well. So that is something that is really important. Um, and the associate dean it made sure that we have a more cohesive uh, uh, program in terms of getting students um, up up to speed with different um, programming techniques. So in large part, you will be doing a lot of MATLAB. So for example, in a course sort of, such as um, quantitative methods for finance, so you will be introduced to MATLAB and understand how to utilize it for using quantitative analysis. Apply valuation and investments are two other examples of courses that teach you sort of um, very relevant skills depending on what uh, what area you wish to go into. So you will learn a, a range of valuation techniques as well as, uh, as well as the use of Bloomberg terminals in terms of uh, getting familiar with these things. So when you get on get into into the office on the first day of work after you finish your master's program, you're familiar with a lot of stuff and you feel comfortable, right? And then the investments course, as I mentioned, you will sort of be reviewed the different financial assets that are available to a portfolio manager, the markets in which they trade, the risk return characteristics, and how, how these um, different products are priced. So I think it's very practical, very relevant for those um, who wish to go in. And as I said, this program does prepare you for the CFA level one exams. We are actually an affiliated program. So that is definitely a big plus. Next, we have the Master Master Science in Leadership and Organizational Psychology. So this effective this program um, can sometimes feel a bit HRish, but it's much more than that. It's not just a human resources uh, program. This here helps you um, get sort of be you you get familiar with all the relevant material that's current research on organizational change. And this is all something that we see a lot of companies very interested in. A lot of consultancy companies very interested in getting people with this competency in because more and more we see in a lot of mergers and stuff across the news. So when, two, when you have two, two sort of separate cultures and they're coming together to be one, one company, you know, in order to derive these sort of uh, assumed synergies, you have to understand that, yeah, these are two different types of people, people with different management styles, two different corporate cultures that has to come together. You need people skilled in organizational psychology to navigate these sort of um, challenges that come up with this type of uh, merger. So the purpose of this program is effectively to provide the best possible education and uh, an environment for the development of uh, knowledgeable and socially responsible HR professionals. Uh, you will be able to, hopefully at the end of this program, I identify necessary changes for meeting organizational goals and ambitions. So you have courses such as, like, such as groups and teams. So effectively asking yourself, like, how can you create winning teams? And this is how you sort of learn the psychological processes that can affect group performance. You have strategic management, which examines the frameworks and concepts employed by managers when they make decisions which govern the scope and direction of competitive positioning of organizations. And then you have a course such, such as uh, persuasion and power in organizations. And this answers essentially a big question. Why do some attempts to influence succeed while others fail. So definitely, I think it's an exciting area. And we have a lot of skilled um, faculty in this area who produce a lot of, lot of research and who would be very much interested in um, explaining more if you are interested. Next up, we have a strategic marketing management uh, master's degree program. Now it's important to understand that this isn't just your run of the mill marketing uh, program. This here is strategic marketing management. And I think how best to explain this is it essentially it's a higher level look at marketing. So I like to often give um, students this scenario. You know, let's say you're sitting, you're the, you're the head of the marketing department in Coca-Cola and you're about to go to the board with a, a, a marketing campaign that costs, let's say a worldwide marketing campaign that costs like $50 million right? You can't just go and present your, your idea without any basis behind, well, will this actually land in the market? Would it work? You know, this is a big investment. And more and more, we see that marketing professionals are being driven by data, by the data. 
So how do you, how do you build a, a strong brand in the good, goods and services market and the financial consequences of market investments? This is the type of stuff you will, you will be addressing in this program. So by taking this program, you will be able to further develop your ability to understand effectively what makes winners and losers in a market. Right? So you can expect to be challenged in courses such as brand management, where you're sort of understanding how to strategically position and grow a brand. So could you build the next Apple or Coca-Cola, for example? You can, you'll find courses such as understand the consumer. So this, in this course, you get fresh insight into consumer behavior and what makes people buy. And then you also have the strategic management where you learn to ana analyze the markets and situ situations and get familiar to how top level uh, marketing executives think. And I think this, for those of you who have uh, big ambitions to succeed within marketing, is how you should be thinking uh, about um, going about getting into these positions. You need this, this type of knowledge. So it's definitely a very cool program. And I think the faculty is very, very, very motivated. And it's, as far as I've understood, it's a very quantitative uh, approach to marketing. So you're gonna have a lot of basis behind your decisions. So definitely something that's exciting and it goes in line with how we see more data-driven decisions in our society. And last but not least, we have the, the Master of Science in Quantitative Finance. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you all have ever seen on TV or in movies or stuff like that, and you heard them refer to quants in hedge funds or financial institutions. So these are the guys who sit down in the back room on the computer and develop these really cool stochastic models that um, hedge funds and other financial boutique firms use to invest. So these guys are the more intense finance guys or the most intense finance guys as some um, would like you to believe. So they effect, effectively provide you with a, a quantitative and programming skills for topics co uh, essentially con uh, covering numerical analysis, stochastic models, statistics, econometrics, and how to apply these advanced tools to be able to analyze uh, complex financial instruments, uh, contracts, analyze varied data sets of information, uh, as well as sort of forecasting and measuring risk. So it is, it's a really, really exciting field. And this, I think, is a, is a program that started uh, last year. Um, it's a, definitely a, an exciting area, and we want to get more students in it. So those of you out there who have, you know, very quantitative backgrounds, so your math and engineering backgrounds, this might be the program for you if you're looking to get your foot into finance. Uh, can be very rewarding. So you have well, programs like this, uh, pro, uh, courses such as uh, computational methods where you gain insight into different computational methods for pricing and hedging standard and complex financial instruments. And then you have also derivatives uh, as an example, um, where you understand the workings and pricings of these derivative securities. So definitely exciting. So that uh, is essentially our um, offering of uh, the courses. So uh, definitely, I, I hope some of you out there are really excited and have lots of, lots of questions. And if not, you don't have your questions right now, you can also run to our website and check out the programs because they have full course descriptions. But of course, within the context of the webinar, I can't um, go through individual courses with you. So now I've told you about what, what we have to offer, like what are your possibilities? Um, I want you all to know that there's a ton of opportunities here at um, BI, whether it be exchange, we have, over, as I mentioned, over 200 partners that you can go off to exchange for a semester or an entire year on a double degree. We have internship uh, opportunities in all, our, in all our programs. So effectively your third semester, a part of it, you'll be working in a company. And I think that is a, a really good uh, uh, opportunity for those of you who might probably want to get a taste of the um, Norwegian work life. Um, summer school op op opportunities with our partner schools are also available. So if you want to go do a course, let's say at um, Copenhagen Business School, for example, you, it, that is a possibility, All right? We also have a ton of student societies. We have over 200 actually. Um, and they tackle different interests. If you, if you like to run or play basketball, play football, um, investments, um, business society. We have a ton of, a ton of um, different opportunities. I myself was uh, president of BI Finance, which is the um, Students Association for all our finance students here. So I can tell you that I have first-hand experience and 
I think it's a very good opportunity to socialize with your fellow students outside of the classroom because we organize stuff like class trips. And so, for example, we, we took our students um, to London on a trip, for example, and visited City Group uh, there. So definitely a lot of stuff both inside and outside of the classroom. In addition, we have the Master Merit Society, whereby um, top students uh, in the program get the chance to have a little bit of face time with um, top executives from our partners, such as Equinor, which is the state um, oil company here, uh, Deloitte uh, as well. So, I mean, uh, yeah, NCD are large uh, insurer here. So um, definitely a lot of uh, opportunities there, as well as career and study guidance. Uh, we have a dedicated career services team that do an amazing job at making sure that all our students are prepared, whether it be from interview prep to getting your CVs and stuff right. Uh, we definitely invest a lot in our students to ensure that they are happy with their experience here at BI. Student life is, is, is super important to a lot of you. We have, as I said, a lot of stuff going on, starting from the orientation week where you have a, a whole bunch of activities uh, that is designed for you to get to know your fellow classmates. You know, We want you all to get to break the ice before the very first lecture so that you feel comfortable with each other because Lord knows it's not too long after um, that the group work and stuff begins and projects begin. So this is an opportunity to get to know people. Um, we have the career fair, um, BI being the top uh, business school in Norway. We are in a very, very fortunate uh, position to have all the top companies um, in Norway come in to our school. So this is from your top consultancy, so your big force. So Deloitte, PwC, McKin McKinsey, BCG, all these guys come, Microsoft, Google, L'Oreal, Coca-Cola, uh, Toyota, they all, they all come to, so, to speak to our students, to get a little face time with our students, to tell them uh, about the different opportunities that are available at their uh, companies. Right? And as a follow on to this, we also have then directed company presentations. And these are usually housed either at the company or um, here on campus, whereby you get a chance to mingle a bit with them, um, ask a bit questions, as well as go through a formalized um, presentation where they essentially try to convince you to apply to work in their company. All right? Moving on. So, I mean, all of this is, is all well and good, but I mean, how does it actually translate? So, uh, every year BI does a graduate um, job market survey. So, the results for 2018, which would have been on the class that graduated last year in 2017, 80% um, of our international master's students secured work within six months of graduating. Um, just over half had actual job offers before they even graduated, which is fantastic news. 83% um, was super satisfied with the, the job that um, they secured. And then we also have, for, for those of you who are considering um, staying beyond the, your, um, beyond the master's program, six out of 10 actually chose to stay and work in Norway. So I think that just goes to show you that, hey, that is a possibility if you take your, your degree here, because I know some students that is something that they consider that they may want to stay on afterwards. Um, now, in terms of alumni, uh, we have a large alumni network. So in, to, in the numbers effectively out, we have 85,000 alumni who have done full-time programs. So this is full-time bachelor's, master's, or PhD programs. We have 85,000. Now, if we extend that to people who've done all our programs, so including the part-time programs, one-year programs, et cetera, then that number actually grows to about 300,000 alumni. Um, and I think I mentioned it earlier, or maybe I didn't. Um, here in Norway, for example, four in 10 of uh, the top executives in both public and private sector actually are graduates from BI. So I think it definitely bodes well in terms of the reputation of the school and what you could expect, um, both not just here in Norway, but in Scandinavia and the world at large. Now let's go through a bit of practical information. So I know a lot of people think um, in terms of cost of living, that, that is a big concern and there's a big perception that um, Norway is very expensive. So, Yes, Norway is expensive, but I think if you actually looked at the numbers, uh, it's not that bad or as not as bad as people might think. So an annual estimate, so how much you need for a year is, uh, is about 116,000 um, Norwegian krona. What is that to those of you who aren't familiar with the krona? That would be about 14,000 US dollars or 12,000 euro for the year. Um, those of you who aren't from the EU, you will need a study permit or student visa to to, to take the program here. And with that, you can actually work up to 20 hours per week during the semester and during the vacation period. So for example, summer, you can work full time. Our academic year runs from August uh, to December for the fall semester and then January to June. 
for the spring semester. Something that's very important for a lot of you I know is that you're, you're worried about housing. Housing is guaranteed for all international students. So you just need to let us know before the May 1st deadline that what type of housing you would like, how much you, and you look at the various options, evaluate how much you'd want to pay, and then you can get different options. They, all of the options come with your own bedroom and then it has different um, sharing situations. So either you can get a full single apartment for yourself, a, a family apartment if you're, bringing, if you're bringing families, or if you wish, you can share with uh, different sharing arrangements with um, different students. So they are off campus. Uh, BI is, is solely just school, uh, the school, but the housing options are five minutes walk, seven minutes walk away, 10 minutes by um, the subway, so it's really close. And you have these options both in Oslo and um, Bergen. Now, tuition, I told you about the program. So what, how much do these actually cost? So there you can see the price for the um, program. So all the MS, M, the Master of Science programs, they cost um, 97,000 krona or just under uh, 12,000 US dollars per year uh, or 10,000 um, Euro per year, which is very reasonable. I, I'm sure if you can you compare to other other alternatives in the UK and in um, the United States of America, and the only exception is the Master of Science of Business Analytics, which is a slightly higher at twelve thousand four hundred US dollars per year or ten thousand eight hundred. So as I said, it's very reasonable, and I think one of the cool things about Norway is that there are a lot of student, uh, student discounts, so it makes living here very, very reasonable. I myself came from Trinidad Tobago and had no problem uh, adjusting here. Now, a lot of people probably sitting there wondering, well, Jared, you've told me all these wonderful things about the program, but what about scholarships? We do have a quite generous um, scholarship program. Uh, we have uh, essentially three types of scholarships, two that are internal and one that is external. So we have the BI presidential scholarship. So those are, those, that's our top level scholarship. So these are for students who have very, very strong grades, you know, A averages, et cetera. Then we have a Master of Science International Scholarship. Uh, the presidential scholarship covers um, tuition for both years, uh, as well as um, a stipend for those who um, wish uh, for, for all um, people, all, all the international recipients. And then we also have the Master of Science International Scholarship, which includes uh, tuition for one year and in some cases may include, may or may not include a stipend. The other one is external. It is um, the A. Williamson Foundation Scholarship. And, uh, and they, they give a scholarship that is worth around 150,000 kroner. So that effectively covers you. Um, they give it for two years. And that effectively covers full tuition as well as a large portion of your living costs. So now how can you get into the program? Now our, our ad, uh, requirements are pretty straightforward. You need an undergraduate bachelor's degree from an accredited um, institution of higher learning. So this needs to be a degree that's equivalent of a 180 ECTS uh, degree. So it has to be a minimum of three years. Uh, the program, each depending on which program you as uh, you are applying for, it will have some specific requirements, whether it be math or statistics or econometrics or economics um, courses. So that 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 varies. So I won't go into that too much now. In general, you need a GPA of a three point five on the ECTS scale. The ECTS scale is out of five, so a three point five is effectively a uh, B average. So you need to have that. You need a GMAT um, or GRE. Uh, we are looking for a target score of at least 600. Uh, just a little point to note, those of you who, who come from one of our partner schools, you actually can get an exemption for the um, GMAT um, requirements. So it's just a matter of applying for it. And to find a full list of our partner schools, you can go to the website and um, just search for partner institutions and you'll find a comprehensive list of all our, all 200 plus institutions around the world. You also would need to, since it's an English language course, um, if English, especially if English is not your native language, you would need to see documented proof of um, English competency. This, however, can be waived if you did um, at least two years of higher education, so bachelor's or master's um, in English. So that is something to bear in mind. In terms of documents that you would need, so you'd need uh, your copies of transcripts, uh, you need a motivation letter, your CV, financial plan, and a copy of your passport, all right? The deadline um, for applying for scholarships is March 1st, and that is also a prioritized application deadline. Note, you can still apply after this deadline, or the application would be given priority. So I would always um, recommend that you, you get that out um, soon. Um, sooner, the sooner, the better. 
the application portal is open right now as we speak, so you could go online and, and apply. Uh, it's very easy and intuitive. You just scan in documents and upload into the various sections. Uh, and, it's, it's, and it is important to know that it is free to apply to our programs. So yes, I've been talking a lot now and I haven't probably answered what is on a lot of your questions. Well, why no? Because I, I'm pretty sure that the majority of you probably haven't been considering Norway as an as a option in terms of doing your master's degree pro, program. So why Norway? I think um, no, it, it, it's best um, sort of explained by it is a very safe country. I know that matters to a lot of people. Um, and, and, you know, more and more we see so many um, atrocious things happening, you know, in, abroad that I think it, it, is a, it is a bit of peace of mind that it is a very safe country, very, very stable uh, economy, uh, low unemployment. There's a big, big focus on sustainability. And I mean, no, nothing um, sort of shows this more than uh, not too long ago, the state oil company, formerly known as Statoil, changed its name to Equino to sort of, um, uh, just as a signal to the market that they are thinking beyond oil. So there is a big sustainability drive here. Um, something a bit more trivial, but equally as fun, I, actually one of the first experiences I had with Norway was that they were highly ranked on the happiness index. And I thought um, that, was, that was really interesting. They, they're always at or near the top. And I think in large part, because you have so much benefits towards living in such a nice society. And last, but certainly not least, English is widely spoken. Um, uh, simple things as you know, going to the cinema is not a problem. You know, there's no dubbing of um, dubbing of movies, etc. You know, English. Everybody speaks English, and everybody speaks English really well. I mean, and, and this is sort of the reason why I decided, you know, to sort of move to this to this some to some I guess quite remote place um, from all the way in the Caribbean because I mean, it really is a fascinating place. Uh, you have this city feel while it's not being too big of a city and you can sort of get away um, quite easily to see the rest of Norway, which is absolutely awesome. The, fa the facilities here at BI are fantastic. It's a really, really nice campus. It takes up an entire city block. The roof is glass, so you get a lot of natural light. And it does feel like a self-enclosed city. And one of the nice things about it being this sort of self-enclosed city is that you do need to go outside <laughs> once you get into the building at the start of the day. So it's definitely a nice place, I think, to work, um, group work, collaborate, etc., and just essentially spend time. I mean, by and large, this is a really nice city, a really nice environment, and I highly recommend um, Oslo for those of you all who are looking for something a bit different. And of course, I mean, I it would be a shame if I didn't sort of try to sell what I think is probably no is best known for the fjords, the awesome, awesome landscape that is possible here. You know, I mean, every week we have students going all over to, on different trips throughout the country and seeing totally incredible and amazing things, things that they otherwise would not um, be able to experience. And if you yourself, um, you know, want to see sort of what what our students are doing, experiencing, you know, get a real feel for what. Um, what they're experiencing here, their, their own experiences. You know, you can sort of follow us on social media. I highly recommend um, the Life at uh, BI blog and Instagram account, you know, because we feature a lot of our student stories. The Life at BI blog is actually student run. So they're giving you their perspective and they talk about a lot of common topics um, as well as they've been available to answer questions and, uh, uh, that you may have about actually moving to this um, country so i mean on that note i think that's about it for me i mean I'm, i've been talking for quite a bit now so i'm kind of interested to hear what um sort of you guys you know um are thinking about thank you very much jared for uh, for that presentation so we are now entering the q a section you guys have been writing your questions throughout the presentation i'm going to go uh, through them one by one uh, keep in mind, a lot of you wrote these questions before Jared could get to the um, end of the presentation, which is good. But just so you know, a few things were covered. Also, before uh, we, towards the end, before we go into the um, Q&A section, I also wanted to let you know, uh, Ronaldo asks if the presentation is going to be recorded. Uh, the presentation is being recorded and uh, you will be able to access it on an, uh, through an on-demand platform later on, should you wish to revisit some of the uh, topics that Jared covered with us here today. 
So uh, we have a question from, uh, let's see, uh, Fatima, who asks if, aside from scholarships, if you also have uh, any grants, maybe through the Norwegian government or through BI directly? Uh, in terms of grants, um, I don't believe so. However, there may be uh, some grants through the Norwegian government, depending on which country you're coming from. However, as far as I understand, like we don't have any ex, um, ex, uh, additional grants on top of that. So. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Um, Pamela asked if you have any scholarships, but uh, as I mentioned briefly earlier, um, it is something that you covered towards the end, and I'm sure that Pamela had a pretty satisfying answer, as everyone did that asked if you have scholarships. Yes. Um, so I think we can move past that question. Um, Badar would like to know uh, the admission requirements. We also covered that very briefly. And he would also like to know what the acceptance rate is at BI Norwegian Business School. The acceptance rate, I think it's about uh, 50% or so. Uh, yeah, I believe that was the figure that we had for the incoming class. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And is that across all of the different master programs that you offer? Uh, yes. Yeah. Sort of an yeah, aggregate. That's, okay. that's across the, um, different, but it has like, of course, individual ones depending on um, the program. So there are some programs such as uh, the business analytics program or the quantitative finance program and the Q10 programs that have actually higher criteria than say the average program and, such, uh, and as such would have subsequently lower acceptance rates. Perfect. Thank you for answering that. Uh, we have another question in. Uh, which is, what, are the, what is the competition like for the scholarships? How many applications typically would you get? Um, I think uh, last year we saw something like, um, in terms of actual applicants who qualified to even be considered, there's probably at least four, four people for each, each scholarship. So mm -hmm. it, is, it is very competitive. However, I think um, last year, for example, um, uh, to International Students, we gave out something like, 50 something or so scholarships and so then when you sort of balance that against um how many total inter international students that we had maybe like 130 something or so it's actually a pretty decent ratio so um we do it is very competitive i'm not you know there's no mixing matters about that um and i do encourage every single person to that that um, wants to apply to apply for the scholarships which is done simultaneously as you send in the application Mm -hmm. But yeah, it is competitive and it is done on a, on a, a basis of um, your GPA as well as GMAT where applicable. So we rank our, we rank um, students as well as place, um, take into consideration program, programs, etc. Uh, and we go about it that way. Perfect. Thank you. Kiara asks, are the classes based on teamwork, individual work and what else? Uh, well, with respect to that, um, having gone through our program myself, uh, I think you'd have uh, sort of equal parts of both, simply because there is a lot, there are courses with us a much more uh, individual focus. So I'll give you an example, like the mathematics course is a lot of work that you do yourself. However, um, the applied valuation course, because that I did, because I did finance, uh, we had a lot of group work in that. So present, uh, I think it was about five presentations. Um, we did different Harvard business case studies. So um, it, it varies from class to class. So I'm, I'm not going to say that it's one thing or, and not the other. I would say you could pretty much expect that you'd be experiencing both. And this is in part to mirror what you'd experience in the workplace. You will be working individually and stuff as well as within teams. So I think it's important that you get experience in both, both phases. Absolutely. Perfect. Imad asks, um, can I mix between chemistry and business? I'm assuming that Imad is referring to the, uh, to the extremely uh, customizable um, approach that you guys have with the business master degrees. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I would, I would have to see specifically what um, courses you have done, because whilst it is uh, customizable, you have to have sort of a base business portfolio courses um, to get into the program. And so, for example, this would be like math, uh, econometric statistics, statistics um, um, economics courses, so both micro, macro, um, finance or accounting courses. So you do need some stuff to get in. So I'm not sure um, specifically if your chemistry degree uh, that I'm assuming you have would cover those areas. However, if you were to sort of do those courses outside and then show that you've done a, you know, a bachelor level courses in these areas, then that could be a way for you to get in. But 
um, to answer your question directly in terms of mixing chemistry and uh, business, that would be a no, assuming that you haven't done these uh, actual areas. Perfect. Thank you very much for answering that. We have another question here from Peter, who asks, how many students uh, do you take per program? How many students we take per program? Uh, it depends on the program. So, for example, the Master of Science in Business is our largest program. Uh, so we, we, we don't have a specific cap limit there, but the quantitative finance, business analytics programs, these programs will have specific cap limits, and those are adjusted based on demand. So I don't want to give you a number and say, oh, this is the amount and you have to be within this amount to get it. I would say, you know, put your best foot forward, apply, and um, see, how, see how it goes. So I, 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 don't want, I don't want to say that there are like cap, cap limits. I think it, it, it varies from year to year in terms of how many students. But for the most part, we, are, we don't have official caps. Okay, yeah. excellent. And um, Imad would like to know, um, Imad comes from Iraqi uh, Kurdistan, and he asks uh, about the visa requirements entering into Norway, and if there are any opportunities once he graduates, if he has a chance to then stay on uh, through the same visa system to work in Norway. Yeah, so I mean, as I had, as I had uh, mentioned before when I was going through the, the employment survey, uh, six out of ten of our students actually do elect to stay, so there is definitely opportunity to stay. I mean, I am an example of it. I, I did the program and I'm still here, so uh, so there are opportunities. I'm not saying that they're, they're, it's easier. You have to put in the work. At the end of the day, I think as an international student, your best bet is to do well in the programs. Um, this is how you stand out to employers in general, and this is how you stand out to employers here, as well as doing certain other things um, that, that might make you um, stand out from the crowd. So whether it be getting involved in, in different student associations, etc. Now, with respect to the visa process, it, it is much simpler. I myself um, did my bachelor's degree in the U.S., as well as working there um, on the work v, the H-1B um, U.S. work visa. So I am very familiar with that process, and I would say that it's significantly easier to the visa process here in Norway. And this is both during study as well as um, beyond it. So once you're finished with studies, you can apply for a job seekers visa, whereby you then have a, 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 this, uh, a given amount of time whereby you can continue looking for jobs, etc. So I mean, there is opportunity here as well as it's being a much easier process once you do land a full-time job opportunity in terms of applying to get um, a resident permit to be here. Fantastic. Excellent. Thank you for walking us through that. Muhir asks, what are the mode and terms of payment? Can someone pay in different installments? Yeah. So essentially, our, our payment system is um, you pay once uh, per semester. So for example, when I quoted um, the, the yearly figure, that is essentially broken up into two. So you'd make your first payment in uh, October, and then you make your second payment in uh, January. So that's how, how it would go, yeah. Perfect, thank you. Paolo asks, um, are there job opportunities during BI study time? How do internships and summer internships place, placement works? Okay, yeah. So in terms of job opportunities, there are a number of job opportunities here at um, BI. Uh, so for example, um, during my time, I, I was a student assistant and I worked in one of the offices part-time. Uh, and this, you can work up to 20 hours um, as, a, as a student uh, on, the, um, on the student visa, as I, as I mentioned earlier. So there's that, as well as um, research assistant, tutor, tutoring positions. So there are a number of places whereby you can get, um, get employment on campus. Outside of here, um, we have a career uh, website that actively updates opportunities for people to get different internships and whatnot. So we, the majority of our students utilize that, as well as looking for jobs um, within the service industry, which is pretty common at, um, as a side job um, at the side of studies. So Norway has a very vibrant um, service industry. And I think it's in large part super popular among students because it pays very well. It's not, it's not, um, not like the US, for example. It actually pays livable wages. So um, in large part, a lot the typical uh, student who works maybe 50 to 20 hours on the side of their studies is able to pretty much support themselves quite comfortably uh, here. So I think that is a big, plus, uh, a big plus for those of you who, who are here. And again, you can work 20, up to 20 hours um, 
if you have uh, the, the student, the study permit. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. We do have a few more questions here, which um, if I may advise, for example, we have Madsen who asked the difference between the financial and economic program and someone else who is dreaming of a career in a bank and would like to know what course would be best suited for them in order to, to fit their career path. Um, if I may suggest these kind of questions uh, could may, maybe best be served by a one-on-one -on -one interaction with Jared, you will all be receiving Jared's contact information. So if you have any of these kind of questions or if you want to have say a more uh, in-depth consultation when considering which master's course to embark on at BI Norwegian, uh, I would strongly suggest that you get in touch with Jared directly and I'm more than, I'm sure they'd be more than happy to help answer any of these kind of questions and give you direction. Uh, do we have any more questions then? We've had uh, quite a few of you uh, ask their questions. Thank you very much for, uh, for your questions. I'm sure they've been very helpful to you as well as to other participants in the webinar today. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I don't see any more coming through at the moment. So I think uh, that will just about round up today's webinar. Again, thank you very much everyone who, um, uh, who came to participate today. Uh, I will reiterate, you will be getting an email um, sometime soon which will both contain Jared's contact information as well as some brochures and information on the courses that you um, saw here today during the presentation. And you will also have then access to a recorded version of this webinar should you wish to revisit some of the topics that uh, we discussed today. Uh, so uh, thank you very much again for participating. Jared, thank you very much for giving us so much of your time and for your presentation. Thank and you we will be in touch with everyone soon.